in the last video we installed our react application and then we set up our redux store so in this video we are going to be uh, kind of um, writing the helper functions we're going to be using throughout this application so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create a new folder here and i'm going to call this folder helpers and uh, within helpers uh, i'm going to create uh, the first application the first um, file here and this file is going to help us display error i'm going to call this display error the js it's going to help us display our errors and uh, i'm going to have another second file here and this second file is going to be called hooks form input the js and uh, for our hooks form input js is going to help us with handling state for our forms so basically instead of having to call use state every single time set value set state for each and every one of them we'll just call this particular uh, function that we're going to be writing here and the function kind of makes things a little bit modular and a little bit easier to understand all right so i'm going to start off with hooks from impute and uh, for hooks from impute we're going to be uh, using a react hooks function called use state and uh, basically what use state is is just helping us to manage our state if you have worked with class based components before if you have not worked with class based components you can check um, the last series I did on um, contact manager yes contact manager uh, we used a lot of class based components and for this series we're going to be using a lot of functional based components so this going to use state just replaces uh, this dot state within class based just basically helping us manage our state okay so use state and we're going to import this from react and uh, having imported use state from react we can now export our function called use form fields and our use form fields is going to take our initial state and uh, our initial state which is then going to return a value but before we actually return that value we're going to call our fields here which is our form fields and uh, our function that is going to help us set the values of those fields and now right in here we're going to use our use state and our use state is going to have our initial state so whatever our initial state is our use state is going to take that. So um, when if you're working with um, React hooks functions, and if you've come across the use state, if you ever wanted to use the use state within an application, all you could do is you say const, and then you pass first parameter, and then the second parameter is usually the set that will helps you set whatever value you want, and then we just call use state. And now once we've called the uh, use state, sorry, once we've called use state, we can just pass say uh, true. I just pass whatever I want the initial state of that value to be. If we pass zero, that means initially the value will be zero. Then uh, if we wanted to change the value, all we just need to do was to call set values. And uh, set values is going to change the value by passing whatever in here. And uh, for the particular components where we want that change to take place, we simply get this value here and paste that value in there. So, but we don't want to do that because we're going to be dealing with a couple of form fields and we want an easy way to go about with things. So I'm going to get rid of all this right now. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to return. So our function here is going to return an array. And our array is going to take uh, a couple of parameters. The first parameter is going to be our field. And the second parameter is going to be the function, basically. And this function is going to be the event handler that is going to be attached to this. So the reason why we are doing it this way is because we are going to be attaching a handle change event, on, sorry, not a handle change, an unchange event to our input fields. And we are going to be passing, uh, we're going to be passing states to those input fields. And those states, whenever there's a change in event, we want to change the values. So basically we're going to call set values here. And what set values does is it basically helps us change the values. And we're going to destructure the fields to get the field that we are interested in. And uh, for the field that we're interested in, we're going to get that field by targeting the ID. So event the target ID, and then we are going to map that ID to the value of that input element. So event the target value, and uh, that's just about that for this function. I'm going to save that, and now we are going to go into the second file here, which is display error. And basically, what display error is going to be helping us do is going to help us display our error messages that will be coming either from our endpoint, which is from our from our API or from our application. So let's say, for example, user tried to log in and that email already exists, we could tell the user this email already exists. But you say, well, that's really simple. We could just display that within our application. Well, what if the user clicked on that button and then we had, say, five different error messages and wanted to display all those five error messages? Let's say maybe the username was wrong or the email, no, let's say the, the email was already taken, the password was too short, and a whole bunch of things that could pop up. I want to display each and every one of them separately as separate error messages. Well, that's where this display error function comes in. In the first video, which I did for this series, you notice that if I clicked on the button 
uh, to create a new user and that email already exists, the password was too short, it's going to show us two different error messages. So we're going to um, have to find a way to look through those error messages and then display them individually. So in order for us to do that, we're going to have two functions here. So for our first function, which is going to be the error message, I'm going to say export const error message. And our error message is going to take our data object, which is basically what is going to be coming from our API. We're going to uh, declare a variable here called str, and this is going to be an empty string initially. And I want to look through the value of data object. I'm going to use a for in loop. So basically, a for in loop is usually used when you're working with objects in JavaScript. So I'm going to say objects, right? Uh, I didn't tell you to do that for me. Uh, let's just leave it because, okay, let's work with it because eventually we'll still do it. So objects in data object. So objects in data object. And uh, what we are now going to do is we're going to get rid of this now. And we're going to say if type if the type of the type of a data object and the objects of data objects. So basically the individual values from this data object after we've looked through the data objects, the objects, which is data objects, we want to check if it's a string, so basically if it's a string, uh, we're going to check from the first element. And if it's a string, then we are going to display a message here. But we are going to basically concatenate this empty string with this value here. We are going to have a div, an opening div, and as well as a closing div. Alright, so our div is going to have a class. So basically we're going to use alert, uh, alert danger. And I'm going to add a new class here, which we're going to style at padding. So we're going to write styling for this class called at padding. And for alert, alert danger too, because we don't have bootstrap installed. So we're going to write just a little bit of styling for it. So I'm going to just get this straight up. And right in here, we are going to call our data object. And then the string value of that object, basically the string that comes up with that object. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I just give this a little bit of some space. And... Uh, if type of data object is a string, then show this. Uh, else, so if it's not a string, then we still want to display the uh, the error message, but we would want to do it uh, just to make it a little bit better looking by wrapping this around, say, a bracket here and a bracket at the end. So I'm going to wrap this at the bracket at the end. And why are we having? So let's add this at the front, yes, and at the end. All right, so now that we have our function for error messages, we're going to have another function here, and we're going to call this function the function that's responsible for displaying, displaying error messages. And this function is going to take our error response, so whatever our response is, and it's going to take our display error. So basically, our display error is going to be the div object in which we want this particular error message to be displayed in. So for this, I'm going to uh, come in here and I'm going to say if type, so basically if the type of error response is a string, right? So if what we are trying to pass here is a string, so basically if our error response is a string, which means if our error response is not the object we are expecting here as our error message, then this is not the object, then all we just need to do is simply call our display error and set the inner HTML property, the inner HTML property, to be equivalent to our div here. So let me just copy this now. So so this is going to be equivalent to this guy here since, and uh, let's wrap this around single quotes, and this is going to be single quotes too. And uh, right in here, we're gonna pass error response. Okay, so if our error response is um, basically just the mess string, then we want to just display the in HTML as that. And the next is, we're going to check if the type of our error response is undefined, so basically, if we don't know what our, our error response is, so basically if it's undefined, then we are going to show another error message here. And our error message is going to be just a string and we're going to say action field error. So I'm going to get rid of this now and just say action field error. And uh, we are also going to check lastly if it's an object, which is the more common type of errors that we're going to be receiving from this application from our API. If it's an object, we're going to count the length of that object. So I'm going to say uh, length error object. And uh, the length of, our, uh, length of our object, we're going to use the object keys. Uh, object keys basically to be able to get the, uh, all the keys within the object. And we're going to check the length 
of those keys, which is basically the length of our object at the same time. So now that we have the length of our object, we are going to check if the length of our error object is greater than zero. So if it is greater than zero, that means we have a couple of error messages, whether one or many. We are then going to call the instance of our error message function. And our error message function is going to pass our error response. And then we are then going to call our display error and set the inner HTML property to be our error. All right, and I'm going to save this. So basically, uh, what we are simply doing here is we are finding a way to be able to call a single function, pass two parameters, and boom, whatever error message that is going to be is going to be displayed is going to be displayed within our application. So let me just go through this one more time again. Uh, display error messages. If type of error is a string, then we just set the inner HTML property to that string with some styling, a lot, a lot padding. If it's undefined, then we tell the user action field error. Else, if it's an object, uh, we get the keys within the object and check for the length. If the length is greater than zero, then we call our error message function, pass the error response, and then display that in HTML, the error here. And for our error message function, our error message function takes our data object, which we can see here. We checked if to see if our object keys are greater than zero. So it takes our data object. And now we're going to check if the type of this data object, after we've looked through our data objects, of course, we've gotten the objects within the data object. So the object within the data object and the object within the data object, we now check for the first index. So if the first index of that object, which basically all our objects within this data object are going to be returning just to one string. So we're going to check if this is a string, display this. If this is not a string, we still want you to display the error message for us. Okay, so the last thing I want to do now is I'm going to add up a little bit of styling to this guy. And uh, this is going to be for alert, alert danger, and add padding. And we're going to go into uh, index CSS. I'm going to save that and uh, everything is pretty nice uh, starting from the next video we are going to go into designing our login and registration form so that's just about that for this video thank you guys for watching subscribe like this video share this video and i'll see you next time